Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas. The whole Christmas season. Now please, don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on quite right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled, with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming, I must find a way to keep Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew, all the Who boys and girls would, up, would be up bright and early. They'd rush for their toys, and then, the noise. Oh, the noise. The noise, 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 noise. That's the one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the Hughes, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast. And they'd feast, 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 feast. They would start on who pudding, and rare who roast beast. Which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then, they do something he liked the least of all. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together, with Christmas bells ringing, they'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of the Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for f 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop this from coming. But how? Then, he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful Awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat, and he chuckled and clucked, what a great Grinchy trick. With this hat and this coat, I'll look just like Saint Nick. All I need now is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there were none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, then took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on top of his head. Then he loaded some bags, and, a, and some old empty sacks, on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down, towards the home where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were dreaming sweet dreams without a care. When he came to the first house in the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue. 
were the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk, with a smile most unpleasant, around the whole room, and he took very present, every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkboards, tricycles, popcorns and plums, and he stuffed them in a bag. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags, one by one, up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox, he took the Who's feast, he took the Who pudding, he took the roast beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash, why that Grinch even took the last of the Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove, when he heard a small noise, like a coo of a dove. He turned around fast, and saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this little who daughter, who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch, and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot? The fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that would not light one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child when he patted her head, and he got her a drink and sent her to bed. When Cindy Lou Who sent to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire, and one speck of food the, that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing with the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's houses. It was a quarter past dawn, all the Who's still a bed, all the Who's still a snooze, when he packed up his sled. Packed it with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, the tags and the tees and the trimmings and the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode to the tip top to dump it. Poo who to the Who's. He was grinchously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang loose for a minute or two. Then all the Who's down in Hoover will cry boo who. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sounded... this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry. Very. He started down at Ho he stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, 
It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he wheezed with his low, with his loud throat, the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food and the feast. And he, himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Merry Christmas, everyone. And a spooky new year. Ha 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 